Thanks for being here, you guys. Thanks for having us. Uh, you know, it's the early hour of 10 o'clock p.m., and we're just going to get into this, this whole thing about BlackBerry. And I'm going to start with something really specific. It's actually for Glenn. Glenn, how many takes did you have at the payphone? Because holy shit, man, that was... Pretty <laughs> that was cool, crazy. eh? Not bad. Uh, one. Um, oh, the destruction of that phone was... I mean, it looked like you got it in one and done. It looked really I good. Think we, I think we only had one phone. Uh, it, wasn't, it, it wasn't even in the script. Uh, I, do you remember how that came about? I, I remember it vividly. Okay, because I, I don't... <laughs> It's all a blur. I'll tell you exactly what happened. <laughs> I said, we were, on the very first take, we brought this phone booth in. We were like so stoked. It looked so beautiful. Jared, our cinematographer, was like, okay, I got this looking great. How many takes do you want to do? And I was like, I don't know. Let me talk to Glenn. And I said, Glenn, maybe we'll shoot a couple. And then maybe on one of them, I don't know if you want, just like hit it really hard. Maybe, maybe just try to break it. And he was like, you kidding me? This phone booth? I'll break this thing in one hit. And because he'd said that, and then we <laughs> rolled the take, and he hit it, and the first time it didn't break... He went off. And so that was the first take. And you see Glenn just kind of, it's very, in very a Jim Balsley way, he was like, well, I'm not going to be wrong. I'm not going to let this phone booth beat me. I'm not, not like I said, I'm going to break it. And so now I really have to fucking break this thing. And it's one of those beautiful moments when you're making a film where because you've got a kind of relationship with your actor, it creates a moment of drama that you could never, you couldn't plan that because you were doing it with an... Well, you almost call it like an of-the-moment energy. Did you guys hear that? There's white noise. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah. What is that? What is is that, that deliberate? Are we getting that piped the, in? Mike, Mike is going to have to fix that. Introducing poison gas. <laughs> <laughs> slowly. <laughs> that, okay. It stopped. Thank God. It stopped. Someone put a paper clip in whatever was making yeah. <laughs> that noise. Yeah. Um, Matt, tell us a little bit about, now you just mentioned him, and, and I want to talk about a couple of the collaborators that you have worked with throughout your career. Um, let's talk first about Jared, uh, who's behind the cinematography, and I know that you've worked with him at least, for, it's got to be 10 years now, it's 2023, think back to The Dirties. The dirties which yeah, all, and, and even earlier than that, because I made a web series in Toronto what I, that I shot with him, I love working with Jared because he's so intuitive, and in all my films I'm trying to capture the same thing, which is a feeling of you, the audience, getting to enter the mind of an operator and see what they think is interesting. And it's why I love working with comedians and especially with these two because we didn't really rehearse much and what it meant is that the camera is discovering what's happening as it's happening. Like, you don't know where Jay's gonna go. You don't know where Glenn's gonna go. And if you've got somebody who is intuitive and cares and is listening, then that eye, that, uh, that camera winds up telling you a story of interest. And for me, I, I'm not sure if it translates to audiences, but I love feeling like I'm discovering what these guys are gonna do. As Were those kinds of detail, I mean, obviously, when we, we could do applause for everyone. We could, art department, light, I mean, it's like, my wife is here, Jen, thank you for this, you just put this in my brain. To put us in that world in that time, 96, 03, 07, 08, it, I mean, I'm aging myself here. It doesn't feel like that long ago to me and probably a lot of us, but it's not the world we live in now. Not at all. And so to make that happen, how does that affect your performances as actors? Now, I mean, obviously, hair and makeup, yeah. costuming, but then you're in that world and you're dealing with these references with, with your director. Does that inform your choices? Does that inform what you're doing on set? Yeah, a big time. It's kind of like it ends up having a bit of a Truman Show effect because it's like... Um, the way that they operate, the way that they shoot, we often didn't know where the camera was, and we didn't, and often didn't know if we were on camera. So, so we, so as a result, so that, that meant that all our sets had to work 360 degrees, right? And so, like, there was no giveaway. There's not like when you're on like a, a stage and you look up and you just see all this fucking scaffolding. You're like, oh, I'm not in a kid's bedroom or whatever, you know. Not that I'm ever in a kid's bedroom, but I, but but you know. When he played a kid, when, when he played exactly, a that's, kid, that's it was, was the nineties. It came out fucking awful. Um, it's been a long day, kids. It Should have said his own. No, no, no bedroom. more kids. No more kids. Talking about this movie since 8:30 a.m. But uh, um, <laughs> but but no. So so they just built with like reckless abandon and like exteriors fucking too like that scene that shot of us like pulling up in the beginning after our, our bad pitch and just walking you know with forgetting the easel walking from the car just to the office like that entire plaza is like decked out in old 90s Canadian brands and I was like how the fuck did you find this shit and then like at rim two 
all all of those details, not just the posters, but the like Ninja Turtles blimp hanging from the ceiling and all this stuff that I found out was literally just from Matt's house. Uh, um, but but like but it's like it's all real. None of it was ever assumed. I don't know what you call it, but there's this weird type gibberish that they use in movies when you have to read a newspaper and he's like, as long as it's not in a close-up because it'll just say a bunch of Latin nonsense or, 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 or nothing. There was none of this. Everything, everything was handled with the exact same degree of care that the screenplay was and the filmmaking was and to him it was all part of it and it's impossible not to be inspired by it. Yeah, I mean, yes, Thank every response gets applause. Thank you. Don't forget Thank the you. rule. And, and Glenn, listen, one thing we haven't talked about yet in, is that, of course, this story is adapted from a book, right, that was uh, losing the signal, right? For you in particular, I mean, obviously there is, um, let's just say, a deep and consistent intensity uh, to uh, the just character. Just a bit. Yeah, just a bit that you play. Were you, you, were resources, did they include the book? Did you have any conversations with the, the real man who you were depicting in the film? Or was this all just in the creative team or kind of in your own mind that you brought, that you brought to your performance? I mean, most of it was really just informed by the script. I mean, I did, I did as much research as I had time to do uh, as one does, but I also was leaning on the fact that Matt and, Matt and his writing partner, Matt Miller and producer, um, had also done research that went far beyond the book um, and speaking to employees, ex-employees of the company. And so I knew that they were approaching it, uh, you know, ha knowing, the, having the inside scoop. So I really focused most of my attention on, on the character that I was interpreting from the, from the script. Yeah, no, that makes a ton of sense. And, and obviously these, these two guys, Jay and Glenn, they're, they're so different. They're, they're on opposite sides. I mean, Matt, the opening shots even, right? These, these two guys are going to the same place. We watched you pass horses. I mean, we're talking about, like, I'm thinking about metaphors about technology and human history and where are we going in the future. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's all there yeah. for us if we want it. How did you two interact when you were not in a take? I mean, obviously, you, you guys have comedy backgrounds, you affable dudes, good, normal guys, other than the kid. I mean, other than that one thing. Yeah, but I shouldn't have said that. Nope. <laughs> Literally that's, could have said that's anything. in the trades tomorrow. Department that's store, uh, <laughs> dining room. Yep. I'll be thinking about that one for a while. <laughs> no, we got on like a house on fire, man. It was yeah. like, you know, it's, it is an inherently ridiculous proposition to like dress up to pretend to be somebody else. <laughs> like, that's not a normal thing to do. And so when you were like hanging out with somebody who was like, yeah, this is fun, but this is insane. Like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> you know, you just kind of, I don't know. We, we also been at it uh, all, the same amount of time, you know, and, uh, and so, and we just knew people in common had experiences in common and shit. And so like, yeah, I don't know. Glenn and I got on super good. Yeah, it was really fun. I mean, I, I, was, I was a little bit more isolated on the whole, I would say. You know, there, wasn't, uh, there, weren't, there weren't people in the film that I have tremendous camaraderie with. Uh, so, uh, I, I think... <laughs> a rousing endorsement. <laughs> so, and I mean, I, I mean the characters. I don't mean the other actors. They were, everybody was wonderful. But, um, you know, I think... You know, I, I I don't do like you know m method actory type stuff, but I but I do think that like uh, I mean I, 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 I in some ways I did kind of keep to myself a little bit and and kept myself separated. Um, it just it felt weird to try and you know just be my usual happy jovial jokey self all the time and then try to you know jump into that kind of level of intensity and seriousness. Um, so uh, I was probably less affable on this set than than I like to think that I that I usually am. I thought but, we had a nice in, time. No, uh, but it, the fuck. Yeah, when it was when. <laughs> no, I'm usually way funnier than that. <laughs> now you really we, we sound like Joe. We talked about pilot season and stuff a bunch. Yeah. So, anyway, it was all bullshit, Jay. I'm sorry. Yeah, it was, was just trying to make you feel better. Yeah, there I get it. <laughs> Matt, okay, so I was going to say for the record, these guys never hung out with me. <laughs> okay. Like never talk to me. That 
Shut yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'll say one thing that is really true about what Glenn's, because Glenn's being modest. I, I, I think that he did us a huge favor in his, the way he composed himself on set, and I'll tell you why. It, it, it was very clear to me early on when we were making this film that it is a story about a kind of hacker group of young people who don't really know how the world works getting forced into a new place by a very experienced, driven, ambitious man. And it was essential that at no point in the movie did they infect him with what they cared about and vice versa. And by Glenn approaching sh the shooting of this movie with the seriousness that he did, it made it so real for those other guys. Because I don't know, if the, the other engineers who are in this movie are not actors. Those are just uh, either students or friends of mine. Oh, two filmmakers, a musician? Yeah, they're, fr they're filmmakers from Toronto, and, uh, and they're, they've never acted before, really. Um, and, I, and I wanted that so that it could feel like all that dialogue is improvised. I wanted it to feel, well, for lack of a better word, like real or tangible. And then to have somebody with the presence of Glenn walk into that room with a bunch of essentially kids who are very intimidated by somebody like this. But then on top of that, he is not in between takes being like, oh, hey, guys, uh, we're all best friends. Don't worry. That was a huge service that you did for us because it created a culture that made the difference between action and cut, almost, you, could, you couldn't tell when it was. And it was kinetic when you were there versus when you weren't because everybody could really relax in character. And then, I think you've heard this before, when you would show up, people would be like this. They would sit up in their chair and be like, okay, Glenn's here, right. or wait, Jim's here. Like, oh, like, we need to now, we have to stop acting like stupid kids. <laughs> and that was, it was hugely powerful, because in some ways, that is one of the things that the movie is about. Yeah. Well, thank you. I, I, I mean, it, yeah. I, I did get the sense that some people were a little, like, scared of me at times. <laughs> and, you, you spoiled know. the land party. <laughs> uh, uh, and I, and I, I, I leaned into it a little bit. It helped. Yeah. It helped. And then what was so beautiful, and I, Glenn's talked to me about this before, but we wrapped. Okay, so the movie ends at, obviously, a certain point. And afterwards, he would go, he was going around just shaking everybody's hand, saying hi to everybody. And the m most common refrain he got from people, from the crew, was, oh, I've never seen you smile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. And and so I turned into a completely different person. I you turned it to it yourself. Happen. I actually felt it happen. It, it wasn't an, an intentional thing, but the minute we wrapped, I, I just I dropped all of it. All of Jim just uh, just your I, hair came back. His hair grew back <laughs> instantly. Uh, and 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 I really really was it, it was like I, I I wasn't registering the fact that what I was presenting to people in that moment was totally different was a totally different person than the person they had been filming with for right, the last two right. months. I, but to me, I was like, oh no, this is who I really am. Like I'm, you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a scary asshole, <laughs> uh, you know. Uh, uh, but then I saw people's reactions, and I was like, oh right, oh I'm not okay. I see what's happening here. They they haven't met this person. They haven't. They actually hadn't met me yet in a weird exactly. way. Exactly. Yeah. I'm just imagining the the now what we can now confirm is very real fear of the cats subsiding after a take with Glenn, and then that cast being potentially even more afraid because they have to deal with Michael Ironside. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. holy yeah. crap. But they're afraid for different reasons there. Yeah. <laughs> can, oh, so, but really quickly, and we have a few more minutes, can you tell us about some of the other great Canadian actors that are in this cast? Saul Rubinek, yeah, Michael well, Ironside, tell, how did they get involved? What was it like to have them on set I, as well? I had, I had a vision early on where I was like, I want as many actors in this film to evoke the same feeling of the Blackberry, which is, oh, I remember him? Oh, I didn't know they were Canadian. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? I felt like it was going to work at, a, at the component level. <laughs> the, the metaphor, no matter how many layers yeah. you took it up. And, right. and both Michael Ironside and Saul Rubinek are these, like, yeah. classic yeah. character actors. I mean, Ironside was Paul Verhoeven's boy. And yeah. he, from his own mouth, you know, I was supposed to play Robocop, but the suit didn't fit. <laughs> And he he brought <laughs> what did he hold them with? <laughs> yeah, what did he yeah, hold yeah, yeah, them okay. With? Um, <laughs> it those guys came, and I mean, it was probably more. 
you guys probably felt it more than I did because it was like, and the more professionals that were on the set, the better. But on those days when it was like those scenes with Saul specifically where you guys were pitching, I just felt like... It was like, a movie movie versus exactly. where I was just watching you guys play fucking Command and Conquer for like an hour and a half. I was like, bro, okay. we got eight pages to shoot, you know, like... <laughs> Um, but we needed him just a little sliver. Sometimes you got to shoot a lot for no, that. We, <laughs> we're spoiled for riches with with our cast. We, we, you know, uh, Mark, every Martin Donovan, one of them. Mark Critch, like we 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 had a bunch of like spectacular actors, and um, yeah, I think that's kind of like one of, one one of the wonderful kind of ways that the movie functions is as this neat little advent calendar because they they each occupy their own little space and you go in there and you're in a room with them and then that's this, this, this beautiful little sequence and you go on to another one and so like yeah I love our ensemble mm -hmm. yeah it was I mean I think we all agree you can see how many folks have stayed here it's a really fantastic job that you guys have all thank done thank you and uh, let's give one more round of applause thank you, thank you. for Jay Glenn thank and you. Matt thank you so much thank you all for coming Check out filmindependent.org for more Film Independent Presents events, and we'll see you next time. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thanks, everybody.